Here we're going to look at the common plant pest called white flies. Now it's advantageous when the name kind of matches what they look like, and they do look like small white flies. Uh, this is they look like in the close-up version, and here's a elevated population on the underside of this leaf here. So the identification, they're about one millimeter long and a white moth-like look to them. They look like little flies. Yellow sticky traps can be used for monitoring. So it's good if you're implementing those in, close to your plants to be able to capture these for monitoring purposes. Uh, these white flies damage plants by sucking the sap and vectoring plant viruses as well. So not only is it the physical damage they can do, but some of the viruses that they can vector can also be uh, uh, is a way to kind of reduce plants yield and cause uh, disease to spread uh, from plant to plant. Now where to look for them? They're typically found on the underside of the leaves. We can see a high population here. Uh, damage can be mistaken for aphid damage initially, so it's important to kind of do that inspection uh, and not just say, oh, it's small insects, kind of look a little bit closer and do you see small white flies. If you bump the plants, you might notice if the flies kind of show themselves as they kind of fly out and around and kind of retreat back to the plant. Glaze look to the leaves with sticky honeydew is a signature sign that white flies are nearby because of the piercing sucking uh, that they are able to do to that leaf. They can kind of get that kind of glazed, kind of sticky, nice um, honeydew look as the sap from the plant, the sugars, are kind of being released uh, because of the feeding that's occurring. How to prevent them? Well, if you're an outdoor growing, uh, avoid growing eggplant, sweet potato, tobacco, or tomatoes, as these can be very uh, common host for white flies. Uh, particularly tomatoes I've seen completely covered in white flies, so it can be kind of a breeding ground for them. You want to bag and remove heavily infected plants uh, so you're limiting any kind of cross-contamination. If you're in an indoor grow, you don't want to pull one plant out and drag it down the hallway because that can be picked up in the ventilation and other plants can become infected that way. How to control them? Well, it's very difficult, but there's biological controls such as parasitic wasps that can be used. And Carsoformosa is very common. Uh, it can offer effective control. But keep in mind, these have a tendency to be attracted to HID lights, those high-intensity lights, and sadly they can kind of fly to their death. Uh, as a result, if you're going to be using this kind of parasitic wasp, typically want to find it or put it deep into the canopy where it's more shaded uh, from the plant leaves. Fungi are another option since these can affect white flies through their skin. And in small operations, it's possible to literally vacuum them up, white flies, by shaking the plant, shaking the plant, kind of going through and literally vacuuming them up to reduce their numbers. This shows a tomato leaf with white fly nymphs that are the white and parasitized ones that are black. Uh, so we can see here this is a good sign that the biological control is doing its job. It takes a little time for it to get established and spread through the area, but if established properly, it can be a method of effective control for white flies.